What's up YouTube? This is Arl Yoshi as usual. I'm Max bringing you Let's Play The Letter. This is a demo for the full game The Letter, which is currently in development by Yang Yang Mobile. If you look in the description below, you'll find a link to a Kickstarter where you can uh, back the game. They're trying to reach a uh, goal before, I believe, November 22nd. So if you can uh, donate money, help it out, get it funded, that'd be pretty good because I think this game looks amazing and even though I'm not a big horror fanatic, I am definitely looking forward to doing this. So, let me synchronize. One, two, one, two. And we'll go, uh... Eh, Bob should be fine. New game. Oh, jeez. That's a good omen. <laughs> I don't think this is a very long demo, so... We'll see how this goes. It's very fitting for one of the Halloween get Oh. The Ermengarde Mansion. I may have read that as Ermengarde Mansion for a moment. Okay, uh, it was built for Lord William and Lazy Elizabeth Ermengarde. Both were well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Humble ambassadors of peace, beloved by their people. The seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of the Great Plague. Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. She was orphaned at the age of four. The mansion stood since the 1620s, a witness to a very long history of joy and pain. After the mysterious disappearance of Lady Charlotte, the great house was left abandoned. And that is when it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things. Cries and howls filled the nights and hearsay of a mysterious woman that roamed aimlessly. People who dared enter its halls were simply never heard from again. Even after 400 years, these stories remain much like the house itself. Whispers about the once great house, its legend and its curse, still fall upon the villagers' ears. However, Briar Realty Corporation is convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, the corporation decided to place the property on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside wait to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Good luck. I'm gonna need it. Oh. Um. Welcome to class! <laughs> Hello? Okay, that was, a. Uh, that's, uh... That's one nightmare to have during math class. Okay, uh, hello? Isabella? Are you there? Where are you? Immediately, I recognized the anxious, jittery voice coming from the other end. Oh, hey, Rose. I'm at St. Goretti High. What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? It's the mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Jeez, we're on shift together. You promised. Oh my god, don't tell me you forgot. You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? You chickened out. Calm down. <laughs> Isabel ain't having any of your shit, Rose. You know I take my promises seriously. I'd like to believe that, so hurry up and get here. This place is huge. A bit too quiet since nobody's lived here since, like, forever, but beautiful nonetheless. Like, that's a little bit formal for presumably high school students. Also, gotta say, the graphics and background animations are amazing. Like, this is a lot of work put into what's a visual novel background. Those birds flying in the background are looking the same every time, though. The leaves, the clouds, the freaking the dust particles in the air, holy crap. That is detail. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know, I just wish I can live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. Hopefully not from being strangled. Yeah, well I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumors say that it's haunted. Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real after all. And even if they are, which they are not, they can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. That's a racist term! How dare you! You don't know that! 
They might be listening right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to use their supernatural ghost powers to curse you. No offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. I can't tell if they're, uh, I'm assuming they're sisters or friends, but yeah, okay. Eh, believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right. Anyway, get here ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being on my own. Fine, fine. Let me just finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Okay, see you. Bye. Bye. Rose, still charming as ever. Who was that? I look up from my phone to see Becca. Oh. Oh boy, the animation. Oh, right, they're animated. That's interesting. She gives me a questioning look. Oh, that? That was Rose. She's an agent like me. Wait. Where are... What is... Hang on. I, are you supposed to be... Maybe... Is this college or something? No, no, it's a high school, she said. Are you a student here or what? Because I don't think high school students would be real estate agents. Uh, we're scoping out the big mansion down Anselm Village. Today's sort of its grand opening to the public. Or maybe they're not actually agent. Oh, wait, no. She just said it was. My god, I am having trouble keeping track of everything. The corporation... Oops. Uh... Uh, I went back a bit, but I skipped past that, I didn't need to. A mansion? You mean that big spooky mansion you're telling everyone about? Didn't you keep telling us how it just gave you the creeps, and you have to go there? I'm a little bit worried, because, uh, if the character sprites have animation, I feel like that's gonna make this even scarier when, inevitably, a the ghost girl covered in blood shows up. Well, I did promise Rose I won't ditch her. And besides, a job is a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. That's a lot of apostrophes. She snickers. That sounded more like a giggle. Or a chortle. What's so funny? Mm -hmm. Nothing. It's just I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so out of character. She's only been in here for like five minutes! You don't get to decide what is and isn't out of character yet? Jeez! I mean, no offense, but I thought you'd back out. You've been freaking out about the place being cursed and all. Isn't, in, isn't your mantra, morality and personal beliefs over money? Not all the time. Because of the rumors, Briar Realty is desperate to sell... My dogs don't like you, Isabella. And the agent who lands the deal is going to get a big bonus. I could really use that extra moolah. Mama called last night. Papa isn't getting any better, and they're asking for more money to help with the bloating hospital bills. I'm like, dogs are... Eh. A sympathetic look crosses Becca's pale face. Life back home is tough, huh? A little bit, yeah. It would help if it wasn't the only one in the family who has a job. Tough was an understatement. The burden of feeding eight mouths and set settling Papa's bills rested on my shoulders. I barely have any money left for myself. It used to be easy back when Papa was in good shape. Ever since he was diagnosed with cancer, he had no choice but to leave his job. I just wish my drunkard older brother would lend a hand, but Lord knows if that'll ever happen. I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. She crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. Stop eating junk. They're cheap, but they're not good for you. You don't want to end up in a hospital like your father, do you? Her voice rises as she scolds me. It's clear that it's a command and not a request. I'm not entirely sure if I should be happy or annoyed. I'm glad someone's looking out for me. But, Rebecca's domineering attitude can be such a pain at times. She's more controlling than Mama, and that says a lot. Yeah, I'll stop. I grumbled, but she didn't seem to care much. She gives me a warm smile. Good. Look, if you need anything, tell me and I'll help in any way I can. You don't have to do this alone. I'm guessing that, uh, basically we're introducing... Part of this is said that there's going to be, uh, six characters that you can play in different chapters. I'm assuming Rebecca's going to end up being one of them. Maybe I can lend you money and you can pay me back whenever. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. Eh, you and your pride. But suit yourself. The offer stays on the table, though. I nod in response. She takes a quick glance at the wall clock above the chalkboard. Well, enough chit-chat. Lunch is ending and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Oh, maybe they're... Maybe... Okay, Rebecca's a teacher then, I'm guessing. And I guess... Isabella's either here for some reason or is also a teacher. Okay, so not students after all. Got it. Good luck with your clients. This makes it makes a lot more sense. She turns to her desk, sloppily turning the pages of a rather thick textbook about Mesopotamia. I reckon she's trying to work on her lesson plan for next week. 
but her eyes are distant and she doesn't seem too attentive on whatever's at the book. It's obvious, something else occupies her thoughts. You sure you can manage on your own, though? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. You shouldn't even be working right now. Oh, hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. I hesitate for a moment. Becca and I are neighbors. She was the first to welcome me when I moved here to England a couple years ago. Ha, huh, England. She's brazen, feisty, and always had many stories to tell about her students. Did one of them set their sock on fire? We quickly, be quickly, we quickly became friends, and we also quickly learned how to speak English. And, with my family staying in the Philippines, she filled the void and became a sort of sister to me. Becca's had a cold for a couple of days now, and, despite my advice to take the week off and rest, she went ahead to work anyway. I caught her trying to sneak out this morning. Since there's no stopping her, I volunteered to drive her to St. Goretti High School where she teaches history to rowdy teenagers. Not exactly the easiest job in the world, but I guess it's perfect with her boisterous and somewhat bossy persona. Okay, good to know they're answering the question at least. Oi, Belle! Uh, Becca clicks her fingers, snapping me out of my thoughts. Seriously, lady, I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. I'll call you if I still feel bad, and you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. Capiche? She gives me a reassuring smile. I sigh, defeated. Alright, I'll see you later, okay? She nods. Of course. With a wave goodbye, I leave her alone to her classroom and her thoughts. <clears throat> My car is parked down the street just outside of campus grounds. Whoa! There's the same birds, but... Now we're out in the city. I think the clouds still move. Side of grounds. The mansion is some ways out in the countryside. As I pass by a couple of buildings, I'm about to turn on the radio when my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking. I neatly tuck it between my ear and shoulder. Rose? Guess again. A voice. Ash. From Pallet Town? Bingo. Hey, what's up? Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. Ashton, is this a guy or a girl? I can't tell. Uh, you mean that thing with Zack? Yeah, it's the premiere of that indie movie he's been working on for ages. He's really excited to watch it with his friends. And by friends, he means us, apparently. Yeah, no, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Cool. I'll see you later. What time do you get off? I believe that's a little too personal to be asking, sir. Around 4, 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first day of open house at Ermengard Mansion, and we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. Ermengard Mansion? You know, the big Jacko... Jacobean Mansion at Anslem Village? I'm on my way there right now, actually. On your own? Yeah, well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see. Looks like the scaredy cat finally toughened up. Shut up! I can hear Ash chuckle from the other end. I'll see you later. Drop me a call when you're done. Whatever. Bye. Stupid Ash. Always teasing me whenever he sees a chance. I'll show him who's tough. Okay, good. It's a guy. I figured it out. It takes a few more minutes before I finally reach the infamous mansion. Well, this doesn't look too scary. It's totally not going to get super scary at any point, right? I have to admit, it does look wonderful from the outside. Yet, that does nothing to hide that something is just wrong. The neighborhood nearby is desolate. Everybody keeps their distance out of fear, horrified at the thought of failing, of, uh, of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow, it makes me feel sad. The lack of human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it had any right to be. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place is going to be at night. Parking my car along the vast green fields, I make my approach. I rummage through my bags for the keys when I notice that the door is slightly ajar. Rose must have left it open. Entering... I just find myself completely aware of my surroundings. They've cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusty the antiques, searched every nook, cranny and crevice and made it spick and span, all for the sake of making the mansion more enticing to the modern day lords and ladies. But, no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. As though it was going to eat you alive. If you ask me, they should just leave this place alone. Ugh, the light shining through. Some things in this world are better left in peace, never to be disturbed ever again. Rose? I call out. Rose, I'm here, where are you? My voice echoes softly through the hallways. Oh, who am I kidding? 
In a place this big, I don't think she'd hear me despite the deafening silence. She could be all the way on the other side of the mansion for all I knew. Rose is either dead or planning a prank. I can tell that right now. I reach my phone and dial her number, but... The number you have reached is not in service. Not in service? What do you mean, not in service? We were just talking a while ago. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Or maybe the ghost did hear us talking and spirited her away. Right? Right? No, Isabella, don't be ridiculous. She probably wandered off deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping to connect this time. The number you have reached is not in service. But no avail. Oh boy. I have a very bad feeling about this. Rose, if you can hear me, please come out. Come on, Rose. This isn't funny. You know this place gives me the creeps. No answer. This isn't going to work. The place is big. She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. I'm worried. I take a deep breath before venturing on deeper into the mansion. Oh boy. Taking a couple of steps forward, I notice something moved by the hallway above the grand staircase. What the hell? I didn't notice anything, so I'm really worried now. Rose? Rose, is that you? Not funny. I'm leaving you if you don't come out. Silence. Not coming out, huh? Fine, I'm going. Okay, that was a lie. She's my friend. I can't really leave until I know she's alright. I dial her number again, hoping she'd pick up this time. Come on, please give me something. Please, Lord. Yes, finally, it came through. Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She didn't respond. Albeit there's heavy static coming from her side, I doubt she could hear me. Rose, come on, where are you? I ask again as the static starts to settle. Attic. What? Why the attic? Oh, it got cut off. Man, do I really need to go there? With how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there. Why was she there? Out of all the places she could be, she just had to make me go fetch her in the creepiest room of this place. Is she doing this to get back at me for being late? Whatever, I'll just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better about being in this place. I make my way carefully up the staircase. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I chose real estate, when I could have picked up a career that didn't involve strange abandoned houses. You should have become a YouTuber. There's those birds again. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greeted me. The hallway had two wings, the east wing and the west wing, and with it, it could fly like the birds! The two master bedrooms and the library were situated in the east wing. Meanwhile, I faced the west wing, which held the conference room, the theater room, and, at the end of the hall, a simple wooden door leading upstairs to the attic. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs that led to the attic are, or that lead to the attic are deep, steep, and were made of rocks. Mm, excuse me. If I'm not too careful, I could easily stumble and fall. Thank God it's still daytime. With how old the place was, there was no light fixtures, and I need a candle or a flashlight to make my way around. Reaching the top, the door opened to a maid's quarters. What about her dimes? It looks exactly as it had been since the last time I was here. Full of dust, worn out, and faded by time. I do not like the way this is uh, going right now. Did the cleaning crew miss this room? Ugh. Cleanliness is the least of my concerns right now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here. Bloody hell. Don't say blood. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, no. It couldn't have been a dream. And I'm sure she said she was here in the attic. After all... The creepy ambience of this estate is doing such a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. Maybe this is just a prank. Or maybe the phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got to her. Yeah, shut up, brain. You are not helping. Yeah, I know. Please, just... Mm. 
Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? That's it. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. You must have angered the spirits living here. I knew disturbing this mansion was a bad idea right from the very start. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. They think I'm cuckoo because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that. Me and my outlandish backwater country beliefs. I've always strived to be a model employee, but not this time. No, I'm turning back for the sake of my sanity. Briar Realty can find another agent who is more fucking realistic than me to tour people around this haunted house. Before turning back, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Huh? What's this? My worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss it when I first entered the room. There's clearly something on the floor. It looks like a letter. Oh boy. It's a letter, lying on the ground just a couple of inches away from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity, I lean down and pick it up. Strange. I don't recall seeing this letter the last time I was here. A few days back, a few other agents and I were exploring the mansion to prepare for today. I had been the last to look inside the attic and leave this cer and this certainly hadn't... I had been the last to look inside the attic and leave, and this certainly had it hasn't been here before. Someone must have been in this room since then. Did Rose leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her though, could I? There's only one set of stairs to and from the attic. Only one way to find out. The letter isn't exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient. The paper is so thin and rough, I'm worried it will fall apart if I so much as touched it. I need to be careful. I open it and, and what I read sh and what I read shook me to my core. Oh boy. I don't like this. What? Wh what? Oh my god. It the letter. It's filled with nothing but the words help me written in a crimson shaded pen. That might be blood. Or blood. Yeah. I gulp. The same phrase just keeps on going and going on until... Send this to five people or else. Send this to five people or else. Or else what? Or else what? As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper. I peek into the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on the second page. But there's nothing. No. Oh, please, no. My hands are trembling as dread creeps over me. I start to realize that the room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here! Folding the paper in half, the sight that greets me next has me frozen on the spot. Oh no. No, God. Hmm. <sighs> A pair of blood-soaked feet enters my field of vision, covered in gaping wounds with skin eaten away to reveal flesh, bone, and all manner of things one isn't meant to see. Nerves and veins are exposed in a grotesque display. A foot- I didn't come here to read Creepypasta! A foot rested at a painfully odd angle and all the toenails seem to have fallen off the only decay remains of infected nail beds in their wake. I can feel bile rising in my throat at the gory sight. It's too much. All of it is too much. I want to make a break for the door. Run. Scream throw up anything, but my feet won't budge. I feel trapped in my own body, glued to the floor out of terror. The only sign that I am still alive is a loud beating of my heart as it echoes in my ears and the tremor that continuously runs through my body. I'm definitely not breathing. Or maybe I am, but Lord knows it certainly doesn't feel like it. I open my mouth to say something, but the words catch in my throat. I'm completely paralyzed and frozen on the spot. I want to cry. I... I don't know what I should do. Lord, please help me. How about close eyes and pray? I shut my eyes tight, muttering fervent prayers under my breath. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed by thy name. Prayers ta uh, taught to me as a child by Mama and my Papa slip out endlessly through my teeth. Because God, oh God, if you have to listen to any of my prayers, please listen to this one. And if God didn't listen, at least I won't see the thing that kills me. A cold comfort. I wait. And I wait some more. But when nothing's happen when nothing happens, I dared to take a peek only to find that the ghost, the thing, whatever it is, it's gone. 
Relief washes over me as I shakily got up to my feet and back away towards the door. Jiggling the door open, I slip out without a second thought and make a run for it, down the stone steps and onto the hallway. I take a look back to make sure it wasn't behind me. Any other person might have stopped, dismissed it as a trick of the light and of an overactive imagination. But I wasn't taking my chances. Yeah, good on you. I do not like the way this is going right. I mean, I like the game, let me clarify that, but I do not like scary stuff. I knew what I saw in there, and I wasn't giving that thing the chance to catch me off guard. I wasn't safe until I got out of here. It was going to jump out at any moment and get me while I was still here. I told them! I fucking told them! Oh man, oh man, oh man! Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me and... My shoe slips and I find myself falling. Until my back hits the ground and pain racks my body. Oh no. I feel my head grow fuzzy and my vision dims even as I fight to stay awake. No. Go. Away. The last thing I see are those feet before all that I know is darkness. Oh, God. Okay, that was the demo for The Letter. Oh, my God. Well, happy Halloween! And, yeah, as they say, if you liked what you saw here, uh, go down the description. You'll find a link to the uh, Kickstarter for The Letter. And uh, you can make there be a full version of this game. In all of its creepy gore, uh, glory, gory might also apply depending on how things go. Yeah. <sighs> okay, that's the letter. And, uh... Alright, yeah. Uh, thanks to Yang Yang Mobile for uh, hooking me up with this demo to uh, play and show off to you guys. Uh, while I am definitely not a fan of horror stuff, this was... Pretty interesting. I'm scared of the freaking title screen right now. So, uh, I've been Max of RL Yoshi, and yeah, I'll see you next time with something else that's hopefully less scary. <laughs>